arose with a mighty triumph of his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. And so Lord we bless you because your reason the death could not hold you down. You led captivity captive. You got to that place and you took over the keys. And you came out and you got the name that is far above every other name. That at your name every knee shall bow. The ones in the heaven on earth and underneath the earth. And they will all open their mouth and say that Jesus is Lord. Father, thank you because you gave us the privilege to know you to love you, to come into your presence. Therefore, we praise you with all our hearts. I will praise you every day, God of Abraham. I will worship you with all my life, in every circumstance. Oh, I will praise you every day, God of Abraham. I will worship you with all my life in every situation. Amen. I want you to take your seats, bring out your Bible. For some time now, we have been in a series. The series that we have been in is a series that has brought us to the covenant of wealth. Amen. Amen. And indeed, the Lord has been faithful in all his doings. A lot of us has been testifying because of what the Lord is doing. Indeed, we will confirm that there is a change of level. You know, when someone gets pregnant, you will not know in the first three months. But by the fourth month, you will understand. So what I'm saying now, you might not understand, but in a very short while, you will get to understand. The effect of this program has been so amazing. It has been so wonderful. We started by the waters because we identified the four elements. The water, the earth, the fire. Today we are going to be dealing with the air. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because you need to discover yourself. Amen. Amen. If you do not discover yourself, you will not function effectively. You will function below standard. And that will not be good. Because the Bible said to us that Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus came for you to experience the abundant life. So if you're not having the abundant life, something is wrong somewhere. That is why we need to rectify what we have been rectified. And to the glory of God, we are really, really seeing the effect of what we are doing. Can I hear someone say hallelujah? hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so at this point, I know that some of us still have a point of contact to the fire. If you came with us, can you just raise up your hand? Okay, just hold it in your hand and lift it up so that I can pray with you before we go over to the last and final one, which is which has to do with the air. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Yes. 
The same God of our Lord is rich unto all that call upon Him. Father, I stand in the gap with agreement that this point of contact to the fire in the hands of your children shall be a weapon of testimony. Amen. You will light the alarm, you will light their candle, Amen. you will light their way, Amen. you will light their life, Amen. you will light their careers, Amen. you will light their desires, Amen. you will light their expectations Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, season of their life from today is taken away. Amen. Father, Lord. it's all about you. Yes, we believe in your power. Yes. Once it was written, twice we heard that our power belongs to you. Yes. As they use the King of Glory, this point of contact in their hands. From today, Lord, by your strength, they will run through a truth. Amen. By your strength, they will leap over a wall. Amen. By your strength, their leg will be on the neck of their enemy. Amen. By your strength, victory shall remain in their camp. Amen. Father, we saw it in your word that David was a man that never lost any battle. And David said, For thou, Lord, will light my candle. Light the candle of your children. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can someone shout, I believe. I believe. It is done. Amen. You can go and use it any style you want. Your enemies shall be non-existent. Amen. A time will come, you will look for them, you will not find them. Your eyes will see your desires upon your enemies. The wickedness of the wicked on your path or in your life shall not go unpunished to the glory of the living God. Listen, in this season, any wicked man or woman harassing your joy, harassing your peace, harassing your source, harassing your path, their prayers, if they are Christian, will become sin. Amen. To the glory of the living God. Amen. They will seek the Lord, but the Lord will hide his face from them. Amen. Because of their wickedness. <laughs> the Bible said that there is no peace for the wicked. Amen. The snare they have laid for you, Jehovah will cause them to jump inside. Amen. So that they will test what they have put on your path. You will rejoice in this season. Amen. And you will come back to testify. Amen. Can someone say, my God is good? My God is good. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to understand something. The place of the earth is very important. But I have to make you understand that what we are doing is not alien. It's biblical. That is why for everything we do, we got to find it from scriptures and get it out properly and do it properly. Amen. Amen. When you want to assess the air, the easiest way to assess your, the air is by your breath, true or false. Amen. If I say, show me the air, can you show me the air? But you can feel the air if you, if you breathe. If you put your hand probably close to your mouth and breathe in and out, you will feel the air on your skin. So the easiest way to assess the air is by your breath. Now I said that you need to understand yourself. You have to discover yourself. I told you the other time that the only creature that God has to have a consultation process before he was created is man. Amen. Now, if we want to point contact to the air, which is a very, very significant and unique thing, and we have to use our breath, is also significant and unique spiritually. Why? Because our breath is not ordinary. But when you look at yourself, and you do not understand yourself, and you do not understand the uniqueness of how you were created, you will think that your breath is ordinary. Amen. But I want to show you something. Turn your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter number 2. I'll show you something from there. Amen. Amen. Now the Bible says, um, in verse uh, 
in verse okay let me start from verse 6 amen, amen. okay let me start from verse 5 before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown for the Lord God has not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground have you seen it there there was no man to till the ground but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground another time we have to discuss that but that's not where we are going today seven and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground remember when we were dealing with the earth what we had to go through the expose we had and the rema we discovered now the bible says that is why when we refer to the earth, we call it what? The raw material of man. He said, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And what did he do? He breathed into his nostrils. Tell your neighbor, I carry the breath of God. I carry the breath of God. I don't know if you saw it. Is this only in my Bible? Are you sure it's in your own Bible? Yes. He said that he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being so it means that you carry the breath of god so whatever the breath of god has the capacity to do your breath has the capacity to do true or false true. we are going somewhere because i want you to discover something you know this friday the passover will be different from other passovers because we are going to be ending with a breath practice. That is when we will deal with the air finally. And after that, the month of May is your month. Amen. See, month of May is not the month that you will be hearing. It's the month that we will be hearing about you. Amen. Am I making sense? Yes. Now listen. He said he breathed the breath of life into man and man became a living being. It means that we are carrying the breath of God and whatever the breath of God has the capacity to do, our breath has the capacity to do it. It means that if we come into a situation now and we bring our breath into that situation, understanding it via the word of God, it means that something is supposed to happen instantly, not later. Something is supposed to happen instantly. So now we're going to take the, the, the study a little bit further. Turn your Bibles to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter number 37. Let me show you something. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we there? I will just read. This is the very story that we all know. Ezekiel was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And the Lord carried him and took him. And brought him to the valley of dry bones. And he said to Ezekiel, see, God had the capacity to do what he needed to do, but he didn't do it. He said to Ezekiel, hey, Ezekiel, can these bones be you? Amen. Are we there? Are you in Ezekiel 37? If you do not know where Ezekiel is, Ezekiel is just before Revelation and after Genesis. Yes. Turn. Huh? After Revelation, before Genesis, just turn it. Just turn it, turn it, turn it. Have you gotten there? Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Ezekiel, Exodus, Genesis, before Revelation. <laughs> Amen. Because I'm seeing that some people are going to go and look at content before they get to Ezekiel. It is well with our soul. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the Bible says in verse 3, And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. Now, God didn't do what he needed to do. What God did was to talk to Ezekiel. He said, Ezekiel, now prophesy to these dry bones. I will start from there. You know, the Bible says that we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Now, I want you to put your hand towards your mouth when you talk. You find out that when you're talking, that your breath is coming out, you will feel the air. Yes. 
Can you feel the air? Yes. You, 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 you understand the mystery why they say when you speak, something happens. It's because you speak and you connect to the breath of God that you carry in you. That is why you have to be very, very careful with what you say concerning yourself or concerning your situation. I don't know if I'm making sense. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? We have dealt with the water, we have dealt with the earth, we have dealt with the fire, now we are dealing with the air. Praise the Lord. Now, you find out that God now said to Ezekiel, prophesy to the dry bones. Because he knew that as soon as Ezekiel would begin to prophesy, that breath that he carries, which is a point of contact to one of the elements of the earth, which is the earth, will be released. Sorry, which is the air, that it will be released. So, what the breath of God has capacity of doing in Genesis, which was to make man a living soul, the breath of Ezekiel has the capacity of doing by prophesying to a dead and dry bone and make it come to life. I don't know if I'm communicating. Amen. God molded man. His breath brought life into man. Then he takes Ezekiel to the valley of dry bones and he did nothing but he said to Ezekiel, Son, prophesy. Because he knows what Ezekiel carries. Tell your neighbor, I need to know. I need to know. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible says, he said, again he said to me, prophesy to this dry bone, say to them, Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these dry bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you. Hey, what will he cause to enter into them? Breath. Breath. Breath was what he will cause to enter into them, and there will be life. And where did he get the breath? He has given Ezekiel his breath from the beginning. Now he needed Ezekiel's breath to give to those ones. Tell your neighbor I carry the breath of God. I carry the breath of God. Now you know what happened? Ezekiel prophesied. And Ezekiel was amazed. That's why in verse 8 he said, indeed. He had to add indeed. He said, indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. Because he didn't believe. You understand? So as he was prophesying, and it was happening, he had to add indeed. When I looked, it was happening, what I was saying. So it means that if you understand that you carry the breath of God, you will know that when you speak, he has the capacity to manifest. I don't know if I'm making sense. Praise the Lord. Now, he also said in verse 9, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, O son of man, and say to the breath, now listen to me. We are talking about the air. When you talk about the air, you talk about the wind. True or false? Eh? So now, when God is telling Ezekiel about his breath, that, you know, as he's talking, the breath is moving. He's not telling his breath. You know, the Bible said, deep, call it unto deep. You understand? Like attracts like. That's why they say birds of the same feather flock together. Hello? So he said to Ezekiel, he said, now, prophesy to the breath. When he said prophesy to the breath, he didn't stop there. He said, all oh, winds. Meaning that his breath will call for the wind. He said, prophesy, say to the breath, thus says the Lord, come from the four winds, all oh, breath, and breathe on the slave that they may live. I don't know what has been slain in your life. What is that thing that you feel you're supposed to have and you don't have it? What has the devil killed in you? Has he killed your finances? Has he killed your marital destiny? Has he killed your joy? Has he killed your peace? Has he killed your comfort? Friday night is the date. Because we are going to use our own breath and call forth the winds of the earth to enter into that thing that has been slain and it will come alive again. It will not come alive next year. It will come alive on Friday night. Did you hear what I said? That is why Friday, we
we have declared a fruit fast. Nobody should eat anything. But from morning till you come to the VG, you can eat banana, apple, pineapple. Don't eat coconut. You know, some of us think we can do it, you know. If I can eat three coconuts, I, I should be I should be okay. <laughs> if I can eat three coconuts and drink what I eat, I should be okay. You need to be lax. You know when you want to go for oppression, they will say don't eat. How many of you have heard that? Eh? When you want to eat, they will you into the theater to operate on any part of your body. They will say don't eat. There is a reason why. Do you understand? So that you will be empty. So that you will not prophesy Gary and Sue. Eh? Ah, it is well. You see? <laughs> Amen. So that no one will say, yeah, call for. You will be calling for Gary. Yeah. Amala. Instead of calling for the fruits of your life that has been taken away. On Friday, each and every one of us will be on the fruit fast. Then we shall return to do the Passover. Every enemy of your life, after this time out, they will be disgraced out of your heaven. Amen. Now stand up and let us pray. Giving glory to the Lord. Amen. Giving glory to the Lord.